Hello everyone, this is Suzanne. Today I'm going to discuss one of the most important topics that you should know. And this is how to survive a plane crash. Yeah. Yeah. We often think that plane crashes are catastrophic and unsurvivable events. Thanks to movies and 24-7 news channels, the enduring image of a plane usually involves a plane crash plummeting to the ground from 30,000 feet and turning everyone into a fireball. Thankfully, this isn't the case. In a report analyzing airline crashes from 1983 to 2010, the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, found the survival rate of crashes is 95.7%. Sure, there are some accidents where everyone or nearly everyone died, but those are much rarer than you guess based on what you see in the news. The NTSB found that even serious accidents where fire and substantial damage occurred, 76.6% of passengers still survive. Combine these stats with the relative rarity of airplane accidents, even happening in the first place, the average person's chances of being killed in a plane crash are about 1 in 11 million. And you can see that flying is one of the safest form of transportation there is. Taking to the road on an average day is far more dangerous. You just don't feel it because there are four wheels, you're on the ground, and there's a sense of control. But it's important to take note of another interesting tidbit that FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and NTSB, or the National Transportation Safety Board, found in their research on plane crashes, 40% of fatalities that did occur happened in crashes that were survivable. Close to half of airplane crash fatalities might have been prevented had passengers taken proper action. While the odds of being involved in plane crashes are slim, they're not zero. Here are the tips that I would like to share with you on how to survive an airplane crash. These tips offer research-backed advice from Ben Sherwood's top-selling book, The Survival Club, on what you can do to make it out from a plane crash alive. Let's start. Number one, fly in bigger planes if possible. If you have a choice between flying in a smaller aircraft or an Airbus 380, then choose Airbus 380. According to FAA investigations, larger planes have more energy absorption in a crash, which means you are subjected to less deadly force, and that may equate to a better rate of survival. We go to number two. Remember the five-row rule. Many say that the safest way to be sitting on an aircraft is at the back row, which I believed as well before. However, I found out that this was not supported by expert research. According to a study about airplane crashes, the statistics are inconclusive because every plane crash is different. Sure, many crashes are nose first, thus making the back of the plane safer, but several are tail first or wing first, so you just don't know what kind of air crash you'll be in. Knock on wood. Instead of worrying about whether your seat is at the back, focus on finding a seat near the exit. According to airplane crash researcher Ed Galea, those who survive a plane crash typically only have to move an average of five rows to escape. Beyond five rows, the chances of getting out alive decreases. The best seat to have is in the exit row, as you'd be the first one out should you need to exit. If you can't get that seat, get an aisle seat. Not only do you have easier access to the laboratory or the toilet during the flight, you also have a 64% chance of survival compared to the 58% chance of sitting in a window seat. Now we go to number three. Remember the plus three over minus eight rule. In the aviation world, the plus three over minus eight rule refers to the first three minutes after takeoff and the last eight minutes before landing. According to flight crash investigators, close to 80% of plane crashes occur during this time frame. In between those times, the chances of plane crash occurring decreases dramatically. Thus, if you want to increase your chances of survival, you need to be extra vigilant and ready to take action during the three minutes after takeoff and the last eight minutes before landing. Here are some suggestions from the book, The Survivor Club on what to do and not to do during the crucial plus three over minus eight timeframe. Number one, during this timeframe, don't sleep. 
Number two, make sure that your shoes are on and secured. If you're traveling with your wife or with your girlfriend or with your sister, make sure she's not wearing high heels. You can't run in stilettos. Number three, don't drink before getting inside the plane. You want to be fully present in the event of a crash. Number four, make sure your seatbelt is fully fastened, low and tight. And number five, go over your action plan. You don't need to be paranoid during this time. You just have to be vigilant yet relaxed. We go to number four. Put oxygen mask as soon as it drops. Airplane cabins are pressurized so that you can breathe normally at 30,000 feet. When a cabin loses pressure, there's so little air at high altitudes that getting oxygen into your bloodstream is next to impossible. That's where oxygen mask comes in. They pop pure oxygen into your nose and mouth so that you can get the air you need. In the event that your mask drops from above, put it as soon as it drops. According to passenger studies, most people think that they can survive an hour without the mask after the plane loses pressure. You actually just have a few seconds. Just a few seconds of oxygen deprivation can cause mental impairment. If you want to get out of a crashed airplane alive, you want all your mental faculties to be working. Also, follow the safety guidelines of securing your mask first before helping others to secure theirs. You're pretty much useless to others if you're not getting oxygen to your brain. So remember, put your oxygen mask as soon as it drops. We go to number five, keep your shoes and socks on. Tempted to kick off your shoes on your next long haul flight? It's safer to keep them on. If you have to evacuate the plane, You'll have a much better chance of getting out of it if you don't run over sharp debris and fire in bare feet. This is also a very good reason not to wear flip-flops on the plane. We go to number six, practice unbuckling your seatbelt. In an emergency, you may panic and forget how to unbuckle your seatbelt. According to the instructors at the British Airways Flight Awareness Course, it's muscle memory. In an emergency, people panic. They think that they're in their cars and try to release the seatbelt by pushing a button rather than lifting a flap. Studies show that some passengers try to move their seats while their seatbelts are still buckled. And other passengers have difficulty locating and releasing their seatbelt buckles because of disorientation. So practice unbuckling your seatbelts. Number seven, before going to your flight, have a plan. Also have a plan B. After you sit down, count the number of rows between you and the closest emergency exit. If visibility is low during an emergency, you'll still be able to feel your way out of the plane if you know exactly how many seats are between you and the exit door. Study the safety card in your seat back pocket. Emergency exits open differently in certain types of planes and you'll want to know how it works. Also, be sure to note a second and third way out of the plane in case the exit closest to your seat is blocked. Oh, by the way, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe. Click the subscribe button, click the bell, click the all, so you will be notified every time I post a new video. Now we go to number eight. Don't wait for instructions in a catastrophe. Of course, if your cabin crew is alert and giving instructions, you should definitely follow them. But after a major crash, pilots and flight attendants may be incapacitated. According to Ben Sherwood, the author of The Survivor Club, 80% of people are likely to respond to a disaster with behavioral inaction. Don't sit and wait for help. Get out as fast as you can and try to help other passengers get moving if they appear frozen. We go to number nine, read the safety card and listen to flight attendants. Another thing that you can do to avoid brain freeze during catastrophes is to read through safety cards and listen as well to the flight attendants when they give instructions. Just because you're a frequent flyer, that means you're off the hook. Of course not. According to a report on plane crashes, frequent flyers were less informed on what to do and are most susceptible to behavior in action in the event of a plane crash. Always reading the safety cards will remind you where the nearest exits are and what to do during crash landings. As you read through the safety guidelines, formulate your action plan. Number 10, this is the most important, use the correct brace position. 
A number of crash studies focusing on both survivors and stage experiments have proven that brace position saves lives in airline accidents. According to FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, you should brace correctly by returning to your seat in an upright position. Then rest your head and chest against your legs while grasping your ankles and legs, keeping your face down on your lap, not sideways. If your seats are too close together to put your head on your lap, place your head against the seat in front of you. With your dominant hand at the back of your head and your non-dominant hand covering your dominant hand. This is to protect the stronger hand, which passengers need to unbuckle the seat belt and potentially operate the emergency exits. Your feet and knees should be placed together with feet flat on the floor. It's crucial that the feet be positioned farther back than the knees, as legs can fly forward upon impact and suffer broken bones and injuries after slamming into the seat, which will prevent you from exiting the plane. If possible, if you have luggage, place it under the seat in front of you to cushion the blow. The FAA, however, does not recommend passengers to use blankets and pillows as cushions in the brace position as they can increase the secondary impact injuries and clutter the aisles during evacuation. We go to number 11, leave your belongings. According to the NTSB report, again, NTSB means National Transportation Safety Board, 68% of passengers killed in a plane crash died due to post-crash fires, not injuries sustained from actual accidents. The precious time that you spend trying to grab your bag can make a big difference between life and death and no item is worth that. Plus, trying to bring your luggage out of the plane or down the emergency slide will slow down everyone behind you. Or just leave your belongings. We go to number 12, wear the right clothing. Planes carry a lot of fuel that post-crash fires are a real concern. So avoid highly flammable clothes made from polyester or nylon. Instead, opt for natural fibers like cotton or wool. Also, leave your high heels or flip-flop in your suitcase. High heels can puncture the emergency slides, and flip-flops can easily fall off, leaving you barefoot. Now we go to 13. You only have 90 seconds to get out. If you have survived a crash landing, you have a pretty good chance of getting out of the plane alive. However, you only have 90 seconds to do so. Not 30 minutes, not 10 minutes, not even five minutes, only 90 seconds. You see, the thing that kills most passengers in a plane crash is not the actual impact. It's the fire that typically engulfs the plane afterwards. People may be surprised that they survived the impact and become complacent about other dangers. Actually, people vastly underestimate how quickly a fire can spread and consume an airplane. Survey shows that passengers think that they actually have 30 minutes to get out of the burning plane. The reality is it takes only 90 seconds for a fire to burn the plane's aluminum fuselage and consume everything and everyone on it. If that sounds scary, it should. You really need to get out of the plane fast. We go to 14. Get away from the wreckage, but not too far. Once you have successfully evacuated the plane, don't stop there. Get far enough away from the wreckage that you won't be injured by fire, explosions, or hazardous fumes. But don't get too far away ha, from the crash site. Rescuers will be looking for survivors close to the plane. And you don't want to risk about you not being found, especially if you pass out from injuries or you are in the remote area. Now we go to number 15, the last. Be fit. The FAA study, the number of airline survivors, and you know what the results are? Listen, young slender men have the best odds of surviving a plane crash and old big women have the worst odds. There's nobody shaming here, I'm just giving you the results. Escaping a plane crash requires you to maneuver quickly through the narrow aisles with wreckage and luggage around you. You may even have to throw blockages out of your way. You then have to slip through an emergency exit that may only be 20 inches wide. Kinda hard to do if you're out of shape. Not only being out of shape can reduce your chances of survival, it could also put other people's lives at risk because they have to wait for you to exit safely. Holdups at the exits due to passengers having difficulty deplaning has caused many unnecessary deaths. So let's be fit. So there, I gave you 15 important tips on how to survive an airplane crash. 
I hope you won't use this in the future. Again, another episode has passed. Thank you for watching. Maraming maraming salawat po. Please take care and stay safe. Bye! They pump pure oxygen into your mouth and nose. <laughs> mouth and nose. Also, follow the safety guidelines of securing your mask first yeah. before helping others to secure theirs. Before helping others to secure theirs, theirs, yours. Before helping others to secure theirs, theirs, theirs. Emergency exits open. Open. <laughs> Get far enough away from the wreck. Wreck. Get or hazardous or hazardous 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 that you won't be injured by fire, explosions, or hazardous things. Making you barefoot. 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 Yeah. <laughs>